Good afternoon and welcome to the Ask Dr. Renee show. If you've never watched the show before, the show is here to motivate and inspire you to live the life you deserve. Because let's face it, we are not promised tomorrow and we might as well do what it is we want to do today. So my guest has done that to the nth degree and continues to do it. And if you don't know, she's, I mean, we'll talk about all these amazing places you've seen her or you should have seen her and where you will continue to see her because she she's doing so much. But thank you, Carla Hall, for a couple of chefs. Carla Hall, thank you so much for coming. Oh, it is my pleasure. And, you know, I feel like in the time of COVID, we're used to seeing people wherever they are. I am in the car. We're moving. I'm moving from New York. So uh, you are rolling with the punches and it's very real. So hi. Ah, it's live TV, everyone. It's live, live. We're here live. So this is it. So, so let's start at the first beginning. That's what I always say. So Carla, did you wait, did, when you were younger, did you have aspirations to have this life or what were you wanting to be? Because I know you've done a whole lot of things. Yeah, I've done a whole lot of things. Interestingly enough, I wanted to be an actress. So I saw myself on stage. I saw myself performing. Um, that's what I thought I was going to do. Okay. And so you went, did you, so now most parents wouldn't want their child to be an actress. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> so what were they pushing you towards when you graduated high school? Well, actually, I, d I was going to try to go to uh, a conservatory and I didn't get in. I was going to be waitlisted. And so I went to Howard University and I didn't even think about Howard having a drama program. Right. I ended up, I ended up majoring in accounting. So I really went an about face. Oh, that is different. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, that 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 is a switch. <laughs> So this accounting degree that you're using so well. <laughs> so, okay. So you graduate from Howard. And so where did this, okay, so did you actually go to apply for accounting positions or did you just jump into the modeling? Like how did this happen? No, I did. I, I went to Florida. I worked with Price Waterhouse when there was a big eight. I, I worked there for two years and I, I just finally got to the point where I'm like, this is not for me. And I quit. I met some girls who were modeling I, and I've been modeling. I modeled um, the fashion shows at Howard. I started modeling when I was in um, Tampa, Florida as a way to meet people. And then I met these girls who were going to Paris and I was like, that sounds great. So I think I'll go to Paris. I had one telephone number of a girl in Paris and she, I didn't even know her. She was a friend of a friend of a daughter of another friend that my mother called. And so my mother let me go. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So you went to Paris. Lovely. Um, so first of all, I have to say, I don't see you in a corporate office. Like my, I know people that worked at, you know, Pricewaterhouse and I'm just like, I just don't see you in that personality. Cause no. I mean, and I mean, not that the culture, I don't know that the culture has changed a whole lot now, but I know back then the culture, you had to dress a certain way. Your hair had to be a certain way. I know you're a curly girl too. You know, all these different things that I just cannot imagine. But, you know, I'm glad that you brought that up because at the time um, I had a perm. I wasn't wearing my hair curly necessarily. I was wearing those very stark blue and gray suits with a little bit of tie exactly. here and stockings. And um, it felt very restrictive, but I didn't know better. I, because when you are in accounting and you're going to work a job, they're steering you toward the best job that you can get coming out of Howard University. Right. Which is you know? what they're supposed to do. So, right. you know, kudos to Howard. But um, but that's very interesting. So you go to Paris. So how long did you did you do that? This uh, modeling? I mean, not that you're not super tall and super, you know, spelt. You should, you know, definitely be on covers. But, um... Yeah, but, you know, I did that. And, and mind you, I just want to say that it wasn't a dream of mine. It was what I felt at the time, a bridge between what I know I don't want to do and what I eventually wanted to do. And I didn't know what that was. So I was open to trying whatever and to see what stuck. So um, I was over there for about two years before I came back to the States and I still continue to do a little things. I was going back and forth. So the, the way the shows work, so you're in New York, you're in Paris, you're in um, London. Some people may go um, to 
Germany, you know. So I was doing that. And so that traveling for two years. Okay. And, um, and then I came back. Um, I needed to live with somebody because I didn't have a regular job. So I went back to D.C. and that's where my sister lived. And all this time when I was traveling, I had started to cook and there were these brunches for the models and everything. And I was like, oh, this is what happens in the kitchen. Because I, like, I was not really happening to have it in the kitchen. So um, I started to thank people. My gratitude for them was to cook. I mean, sometimes badly, a lot of times badly, but it really was the thought. Wow. Wow. So, um, so you come back, you live with your sister. So what's next? I lived with my sister and I started a lunch delivery service as a fluke after I was doing her baby shower and a friend could come who was in Paris with me uh, about a year before and she couldn't come. I said, I'll bring you some, um, some of the leftovers for lunch. She says, great, because there's nothing to eat around here. And being the business-minded person, I just said, oh, if you don't have anything to eat, that means a lot of other people around you don't have anything to eat. That would be a cool business. That was all. That was all I thought about because my mind is constantly churning and thinking about different things to do. So the next day, I get up. My brother-in-law had eaten the food. And I was like, ah, I was supposed to take a treat of food. So I started making some things. I'm like, okay, what am I going to put it in? I made a blueberry cake. I made... Um, biscuits with smoked turkey. I made a quiche and I made another thing. And I just put all of these things in a picnic basket because that's what I could grab. And I went to this office and she said, hi, this is my friend Carla. She has a business. I love it. <laughs> and I said, yes. They were like, what's the name of it? And I said, I didn't even skip a beat. I looked down at my lunch basket. And I said, it's called the lunch basket. So I said, I have samples for you all today. And I started doling out samples. And at the end, they said, when are you coming back? And I said, I'll be back tomorrow. And the next day I had food and I went door to door, hair salons, doctor's offices. It was on Kennedy Street, Northwest in Washington, D.C., florist. And so within a week, I had seven clients. Within two weeks, I had 14. And that's what I did for the next five years. Wow. Okay. So first let's start over. Okay. So you go from not cooking at all to doing this. Did you, were you using recipes? Like I was, I okay. was using recipes. I was using recipes. I was getting those little pamphlets that were in the grocery aisle, yep. you know, that I would pick those up. I was getting, I had already started getting cookbooks in Paris at the, at the WH Smith, the English bookstore. So I was always using recipes and getting magazines. So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That was going to say, good Lord. Like, how do you go from, <laughs> but you know, yeah. okay. So hopefully, hopefully she's going to sign on, but I have to tell everyone, the only reason why I know who Carla Hall is, is because of my younger sister, the best little sister in the world, chef Alicia Nicole, also known as foodie engineer. Yes. So my sister watch it. So she kind of like you. Alicia didn't really, we baked, I will say that. My mom is a gourmet cook and she, um, you know, we were bored one day and she was like, well, you want to make cookies? We're like, okay. And so we opened the cookbook. It was the, um, oh God, it's a famous, it's um, bread plaid. I forget the name of it. Alicia might come in and say, but it was a children's cookbook. We go through it. I have a lot of food allergies. So, okay. you, you know, we got to be very particular. I can't have chocolate, you know, big things that you would find in sweets that I can't eat. So. Yes. Uh, we find a recipe that I can eat, snickerdoodles. And that Good. was our first cookie we ever made. And to this day, like, you're, you, you know, we, we're serious. Our snickerdoodles are the bomb. And if yours aren't, we will tell you, like, this ain't right. This is hard. It's not supposed to be hard. You know, we're very critical about snickerdoodles. I love snickerdoodles because cinnamon is one of my favorite spices. <gasps> Mine too. I tell people as long as it has cinnamon involved, I'm there. My favorite drink is a cinnamon margarita. Oh, oh. Okay. I don't drink that. I, I, I know. I remember. Yes. But yeah, it's and I when I saw I had cinnamon, I was like, "Oh, this looks like something I should try." It is delicious. But yeah, cinnamon is everything. So we make these snickerdoodles. And so we bake like every Christmas. My sister and I would make like five different kinds of cookies and package them nicely. And my mom is one of seven kids. Those were the auntie and uncle's 
Christmas presents. Oh, okay. And we did this for years. So tell me this. So you make the Christmas cookies. Do you ever do cookie exchanges? I never did a cookie exchange. I think my mom did, you know, and um, when we were younger, but I know one of my friends does one here and I always seem to miss it. Plus, I don't really have my baking supplies here, like, because it's on purpose, because I would eat the stuff. So it's like, my sister, I bought her a KitchenAid mixer, but I don't own a mixer for a reason. Well, you know, so the reason I ask is because people who really enjoy cookies, and I, I love cookies. I had a cookie company for a number of years. I am obsessed with perfect cookies. I mean, like, like crispy, uh, chewy, you know, all of these different textures and flavors, right? But when you go to a cookie swap, I feel like there are only two or three that are good and the <laughs> other nine or ten aren't. And they want to exchange. And I'm like, I want to take my own cookies back. <laughs> I know what you mean. Like, this isn't really fair here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, anyway, that's why I asked. Yeah. But I love yeah. the idea of that cookie box. That sounds yeah. amazing. So we, um, they had like, Target would always have, tin, you know, Christmas tins at Christmas time. So we would buy yeah. loads of them and we would pack them up. And so we baked, but we didn't really cook. Like, I mean, we knew how to cook, but we didn't, Alicia didn't have passion in it. So when she left the house and was a grown up, you know, that's when she started cooking. And then yeah. all of a sudden, this was like her thing was this whole cooking thing. And presentation was everything her stuff would look amazing and so you guys my sister watches every cooking show and of course because my parent my si my mother likes to cook too and my dad likes to eat they would watch so on three-way we would all watch so top chef master chef i mean every single show down the line i have yeah. seen and that's why i know chefs because of my sister so that is how i knew who carla was my sister, you know, told me all about this, especially when the chew came out. As a matter of fact, I saw the announcement first. Oh, and wow. I said, Alicia, um, I think this show might be up your alley. She said, oh, my God, talking and cooking? Oh, you know, and her and my mother, I mean, literally, their DVRs were set. They recorded it every day. They would talk about it on our three-way calls. Did you see the chew today? Or my mom would call me, Renee, how do I get the recipe from today? Oh my God. They oh my God. loved the show. So then when I heard it was canceled, I'm of course the first one that heard. I had to send them the message. They were so hurt. They you said, what? Bad right. They were like, why? Why are they doing that? My mother was upset. I was like, because now at least she's retired so she could really watch. Yeah. She was like, I'm finally home and I could see the show. <laughs> so they were just crushed. But they were like, you know, Carla, Carla. So my sister says, Carla is opening a restaurant. And I was like, oh, okay. So all I know is we went to visit her. Her entire dining room table was full of your stuff. I still have never asked her how much she contributed. But because I know how crowdfunding works, I go, she must have contributed a lot because she had so much stuff. <laughs> I was like, she didn't just do the first level. She did some levels. Carol, we over delivered. We were so grateful for all of the Kickstarter backers. And um, and unfortunately, if you didn't make it there within a year, it was gone. Yeah, and unfortunately, and you know what? She ended up moving back. You know she's on the East Coast now. She moved yeah. back and just in the rustle and bustle did not make it before you closed. Yeah. Yeah. But she, I mean, so then she's been to the Chew twice. And yes, yeah, she's, <laughs> when I, I told you the girl, that is your girl. Yes, I that's your her. girl. She loves Carla Hall. So I told her, I was like, well, Lish, if you can, come on, come on. So you guys, I have to tell you, Carla came to Chicago. That's how we met in person. She was backstage at Windy City Live. I was there with my clients. And um, I told her, I was like, my sister invested in your restaurant and da 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 So Carla ends up coming to my client's clinic. And I said, Carla, would you mind? And she talked to my sissy for an out for like forever. It was so awesome. My sister was so excited. This is while she was still in culinary school. So it was just an awesome experience. She was just so geek. But and we thank you, Carla, for coming to Quench and getting your infusion. I loved it. And do you know that was the barometer? So I continued to do it because I had such a great experience at Quenched. Awesome. Really. 
awesome. and I was telling everybody about it. I mean, I was going to the bathroom for a while because I didn't really understand that. Right. Really it, that's a lot of fluid. Yeah. It's a lot of fluid. Yeah. But it was so fantastic. Sorry, I'm bouncing. I hope I'm not it's okay. sick. It's okay. But um, so, yeah. So, I mean, that's so that's how we met. And then um, she had a book signing in Chicago. And of course, my sister has the cookbook, but it wasn't signed. So I being the great big sister, I said, I will go stand in line with all these lovely fans. And I did. And I went to the book signing and got her book signed. So then I gave her the book that I bought. I gave it to her. So and then, of course, she gave hers to my mom. So I still don't have one. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> look, I'm not the cook like they are. So the two people would need the cookbook. They have the cookbook. Um, my sister is coming in and speaking. She says, oh, mom took notes from the cookbook. Oh, before we gave her a cookbook, she had taken notes from my sister's cookbook when we were visiting her. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, she, and she loves her cookbook, my mom said. And I hope my mother's watching. I did not remind her, but I'm sure my sister will send her a text message. But um, but yeah, so that's how I know who Carla is because I, look, my allergies don't allow me to be a foodie. So I'm just like, but you made biscuits that day I was there for the mm -hmm. book signing and I'm a biscuit person. So that was heaven. Biscuit I told my sister, I said, um, did you know there's like a biscuit um biscuit expo kind of a thing and she's like what and i said yeah i said we need to travel to that because like biscuits are the best are, are you do you make biscuits i do but not like alicia alicia makes you know biscuits like you make biscuits her biscuits are very fluffy and then she freezes them and even when you take them out the freezer they're still the bomb come on alicia that's yeah. a sign of a good biscuit yes her biscuits are flaky and fluffy. She's, of course, posted, if you guys don't follow Foodie Engineer, she's posted pictures of her biscuits. And she's done, I think she did a, she might not have done a video yet for them, but she will. But um, yeah, she's very, I mean, I have never tasted anything that she's made that didn't taste good. So, and I, obviously she caters to my, and I'm honest, I would tell her, this is horrible. <laughs> I would tell her. Because she's that honest with me. She's that honest with me. She, my, this is my 92nd show, I think. My uh -huh. sister used to watch them in the beginning, and she would literally email me a list of like 10 things of how horrible I was. <laughs> Don't do this. Don't do that. You want somebody in your life who will tell you when you stink, that you trust, and it's constructive. It's not trying to tear you down. It's trying right. to build you up. And that's and what she said. Really, yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate it because I used to call her, I called her my executive producer because she would text me while I was on air and I would see them as I, I've turned off notifications. She's texting me on my phone right here, but I turned off notifications, but I used to see them because I used to do my show on Sunday night. So she would be at home so she could watch it live. She's yeah. at work now. So it's a little not sure if she can see it. I obviously she's seen some cause she is posting on YouTube here. But um, but yeah, so that's how I know Carla, guys. That's how that's how it all came to be because of Alicia. But so you, um, way back. yes, we go way back. So you did the lunch basket. That is just so. But you know what? Friends like those are the best friends ever. That like pump you up, and you're just like what? And no, 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 no. No, they're like, okay, go, be fabulous, and then you're like, um, and then you do it. Yeah. yeah. So that is, so you did that for five years. So um, so then what what was next? So I did that for five years. Um, then I went to culinary school. And by this time, I'm around 30 years old. So I went to culinary school. And um, after that, I started working in restaurants. And I worked in a couple restaurants. And then I started doing catering. I worked at a, uh, a private social club. And then I did catering, and that was this whole thing um, that I'm trying to think. And then I feel like I went back to restaurants, and then I was 44, so from 30 to 44, restaurants and then catering. And then um, I did Top Chef when I was 44. So it g gives you an idea of how long I've been. It took me to get to that point. And I'll, I always hear people saying, all my life I wanted to do that. And, and they'll say to me, I mean, you were on Top Chef and then you just happened here. I mean, 
I was in my 40s. Right. This was, <laughs> and it wasn't like, because everyone thinks you're overnight success. No, this was years in the making. Yeah, it was, you know, you worked up to get to that. Yeah. Um, the yeah. foodie engineer, Miss Alicia, is asking, who is your person, like my sister, in your life that does that for you? That does the critique or whatever, or the taste tester that say, no, 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 this isn't good. Don't put that recipe in the book. No, I have a, I have a lot of good friends. I mean, the recipe tester that I work with, Genevieve Co., um, and she's my co-author. She's really good about you know the flavors. Um, I'm looking at my husband. Do you tell me about flavors? <laughs> no. Hi, Matthew. <laughs> He's like, hey, wait, Matthew. Okay. <laughs> he gives me feedback. Okay. Um, but, you know, I have, I do have some really good girlfriends who tell me, you know, yay or nay. Um, yeah, especially when it came to the restaurant when I had it. And it was really important to be really critical and constructive. And because it's, uh, restaurants are already hard enough. Right, right. So, um, so yeah, so you did Top Chef. I mean, what, because you were on, you weren't on the first season, but you were on earlier because now they're like in double digits. So, yeah, yeah. The season five. Season five yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so what did you like? Because we have been telling Alicia to do some shows and she's just like, ah, what made you like, did you see it? Did someone send it to you? What, what gave you the idea? I didn't know about the show. Matthew told me about Top Chef. I had been through a really busy and exhausting um, catering Christmas, like the holiday season. And I was just vegging on the couch. And he told me about the show. And they always play the previous seasons before they play the new season. And I just watched seasons one through three. And then the season four was coming up. And, and then after that, a friend said, oh, they're doing Top Chef uh, calls, like like a uh, cattle call mm -hmm. or tryouts. What are they called? Casting. Auditions or casting, yeah. But, yeah. And I, I was like, oh, okay, that would be fun. But, you know, I was so busy and I was already working for myself. So I was just saying it would be fun. I never really stopped to do it. And then I got a call saying, hi, this is so-and-so. I'm a producer for Magical Elves. And we're calling it about Top Chef. And I thought it was a crank call because that day my sous chef said, I had a dream you were on Top Chef. So to get that call that night, I was like, yeah, this is a crank call. And I wasn't going to call them back, but I had it on my cell. I had it on my work phone. I had it on my home phone, the message. And, and I just kept going through the audition process thinking, okay, this is just the last thing. And even this, I, I'll have a story to tell. And, and then lo and behold, they called me one day after this is probably the, after three interviews, they called me and they said, um, are you somewhere you can talk? And I worked in this big kitchen. It was an open kitchen. I turned to the corner and just turned my back. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and they said, you've been selected to be uh, on Top Chef for season five. You can't tell anybody. And, and so <laughs> it was like, and, and I didn't. Right. And I went through this whole thing and I made up a story about why I, why I left because I was already doing private chefing in the Bahamas. So it was very plausible for me not to be um, in the kitchen for a couple months. Yeah. Wait, did you hear that, Chef Alicia Nicole? She was private chefing in the Bahamas. So we are of Antiguan heritage. Um, my dad is from Antigua. We're first generation on his side. My mom's from the U.S. And Alicia would love to be doing some private chefing oh, in Antigua. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a great gig, but it's hard. Right. You no, know, you. I was there, and it was a private island. I had support, but there were people who weren't necessarily cooks. Who didn't know how to measure when i said a cup they would just grab a vessel um <laughs> and it was me breakfast lunch and dinner there's nowhere else for anybody to go it was all on me so as soon as you finish one meal you start thinking about the next and then you go home you go to sleep and then you wake up i wasn't spending time at the beach i wasn't you know right off having fun it was it was a lot and it was full on for two weeks flat out 
you are. <gasps> well, that's something to think about, Chef Felicia Nicole. Uh, <laughs> Chef Felicia Nicole, think yeah. about that. Think about that, definitely. So, you know what? Your top chef experience reminds me of, I don't know if you know, but Chef Felicia Nicole has graced the kitchen of Rachel Ray. Yes. Yes. So, she, she, I saw it, of course, and I said, you should enter this. And she enters, and I mean at the 11th hour. Like, if it said 11.59, she probably hit send at 11.58. It was that close, because her internet was horrible where she lived. And so, she calls me and says, Renee, I think the producers called me. And I go, are you sure? She goes, they left a message. I was in a meeting and I said, okay, well, when you call them back, you better be the happiest. My sister has dry humor. When you meet her, you'll see what I'm talking about. We are not the same at all. But, um, but she, I said, you better be the happiest person they've ever spoken to in their life. I know what producers want. You better give it to them. Yes. So she, yes. she had her call. She calls me back. I think they like me. I said, well, I hope so. So then she gets moved into the top 20. Renee, I go, what? Then she gets moved into the top 10. I go, oh, my Lord. And then she goes, Renee, I'm going to New York. I go, no, you're not. She I'm listening to Nicole. That's what's up. <laughs> and so she literally, and unfortunately, they didn't have tickets for her, not even one ticket for somebody to support her. Uh -huh. So we didn't go to the show, but she cooked live. It was three of them. She didn't win, although we all think she should have. But she didn't win. I mean, maybe that's bias, but I don't know. But she didn't win. Okay, but I just one of those things. Okay. Well, this was her. This was the very first time she did. Um, Jacques Pepin was the judge, and okay. she. And this was the first time she was doing a culinary school tuition competition, and that was um. And so, like I said, it was the first one. Alicia was excited. She got to hang out with Jacques Pen. It was a great experience. She was accepted that. to that, um, to the school that he works at. And, um, you know, it was wonderful. And the girl that won happened to be a black girl. So we were very happy for her. And she, um, she, and she, I think she had just quit her job or something. So it was great. It worked out for her. And of course, as you know, Alicia did go on to go to culinary school and finish. So all was well, but she has, of course, this lovely video footage on her YouTube channel if you guys want to go check it out. But um, so Carla wins Top Chef, you guys. In case you didn't know, she actually won the whole darn thing. No, I didn't. Oh, I thought Alicia said you won. No, everybody thinks I won. Literally, people come up to me and they say, yeah, you won. I won fan favorites. Oh, um, well, well, that's what counts. <laughs> on Chef um, All Stars Season okay, 8. eight. On season five, I was in the I was in the finale both times, but it was um, I was in the finale. Hosea won. Hosea won season five. Nobody remembers Hosea. I'm sorry, Hosea. That's um, like American Idol, you know. <laughs> the winner was Ruben, but everyone remembers Clay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I love exactly. Ruben, but yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And so. Um, all Stars, Richard Blaze won, and I was. Oh, fantastic. I know who that is because he has hamburger places, and we went to his yes. place in Atlanta. Yeah. Because of course, yes. Alicia was like, "We have to go." Eat. Okay, whatever you say. <laughs> I eat hamburgers. It's so That's great. fine. Yeah, and it was delicious. It's it's delicious. If ever you get a chance, you do a food and wine event, and Richard is giving a live demo. You must go. So, so 2021, so Alicia, we're going to have to do the food and wine event in in um, New York. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we can do maybe, my, um, I think Miami has one too. And so, yeah. yeah everybody has them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is crazy. I swore you won. Like, I've always heard. Oh, she won. Oh, okay. So, Alicia probably didn't give me the wrong information because she wouldn't give me the wrong information. So, I just mis I misunderstood. But she did win because... She was on Top Chef. That is how all these producers have seen you. Yeah, I won. And I think my biggest takeaway from Top Chef was being comfortable with the uncomfortable because it's really, it's really tough to be in a situation where you're being judged. And, and um, Alicia Nicole, you know, you understand this. The other thing is um, to be yourself, even though the cameras are going. And I think that's when the theater kicked in because I'm always, I'm okay with being myself no matter how goofy or, or you know, little quirky I right. am. 
that's who I am. And, and so I grew up saying, you know, dare to be you, dare to be different. Just be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Honestly, that's, I think that's why I love Carla. Cause she literally, what you saw in the chew, that's who she is in person. <laughs> She's just as cool. You know, I'm sure she meets a thousand million people, but she, when I walked up, she's like, ah, you know, I mean, she's awesome. She's just, she's just cool. She's Carla. My sister said she won in our, I'm sure she meant our hearts. So. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank yes. you. And my good friend Eva said, this is what happens when you bring it. I've competed for stuff and have people congratulate me on winning. I'm like, sorry, wasn't me. <laughs> But you know what? It, it, it means that you made an impression. And so right. they just, they stop thinking about the other people. And that's really how life should be. I remember, so I, I still have this thing about wanting to do theater and act and everything. I mean, still to this very day. And um, a friend gave me an opportunity to do something on one of her, um, it hasn't, it hasn't aired yet, but on her YouTube channel where she does these skits and sketches and stuff. And so I started out and I was really nervous. She's like, Carla, I know you have more to give. Like the director was like, I know you have more. And finally, when I felt comfortable, I just went all in. And that's what everybody is supposed to do. And even if you are an introvert, all in for you may look very differently than all in for somebody who's an extrovert or, or borderline. But you're being called to do the thing that you are here to do. And so many people are so self-conscious about that, that they really don't show themselves. Exactly. And you know what? I am a triple threat. I dance, I sing, I act. Alicia, right. <laughs> Alicia did that. She did the um, athletic things. Alicia also can sing and dance and act too, though. But she she has three letters in, in um, golf, basketball, and volleyball from high school. But, and she was so good in basketball, she should have played in college, but that is a story for racial injustice. We will talk about one day. I'm going to make her come on. <laughs> but, um, but so I understand that because I, Carla, have told Alicia, of course, because she is my person. I said, I'm going to be on Broadway one day, even if it's for one night. And I am going to do something. I'm going to sing. Dan I'm going to do, if it's a one woman show, one night, I'm going to do it. And she also knows that I want to record in a studio. It could only be, it could be just one song. I just, and we used to represent artists at the yeah. beginning of my entertainment company. That's what we did. And so I've been in studios, but I just never, and I was like, I should say something, but I never did. Now, what I did do though, one of my clients, the lead singer of Troop, Stephen Russell Hart's Troop from the 90s. He um, he recorded my voiceover demo. So I was in this, his studio and he told me, I think Vivica Fox had recorded in there and Brandy. I was like, oh my goodness, and I'm in here, right. So, and he produced it for me. So um, so that was awesome, but I do, and he didn't know I could sing either till I later shared it with him. So I would love to do that. And so I get it, I'm gonna do it. One day I'm gonna do it. The dream and you all gonna be like, what? Dream is never over, and you, you can never be too old. But that was one of the things that I said to myself when I went to Howard and I majored in accounting. I was like, I can do, I can act at any age. Yep, you know yep, I mean? yep. And that's the I thing, you can cook at any age, you can act at any age. Right, right. Yeah. But like I said, it's the top chef that helped everyone to see Carla's light. And for her to keep getting called and called and called. Cause so do you know, were you the first choice for the chew? Um, as far as no. that ensemble? Oh, no, I wasn't. No, there were several hundred people or a couple hundred people interviewed. I was one of them and they didn't call me. They shot a pilot and the only person who ended up being part of the cast of the crew was Daphne who was in the pilot who was also in the cast. So then they came back and they re they did a chemistry test and they were they were re-interviewing and I came in for that. The five of us, so Mario, Clinton, Michael, Daphne and myself, we were only together for 20 minutes and six days later they announced us as the as the cast. Wow. Wow. It was a surreal moment. And I remember thinking, I said, spirit, 
what does this mean? What am I supposed to do? And in that moment, I said, with this platform, I promise to, to use it for good. And, and she I, did. I mean, you guys, she really did. If you, as a matter of fact, when I was looking at stuff last night, there's a, the Chew has a, has a YouTube channel and a lot of the episodes, if not all of them are over there. Um, and actually I linked in my IG stories. Um, you guys, I have a new Instagram. It's called Ask Dr. Renee Show. So all things Ask Dr. Renee Show are there. But in my IG stories, I linked my appearance on the Chew. <laughs> so you guys, I was in, uh, I just had answered, a, asked a question about Super Bowl cooking. Well, actually, it was actually about clothing to Clinton. And so I did it from home submitted it and they put it on air. And the funniest thing is that Carla goes, doesn't she have the cutest dimples? <laughs> <laughs> and this is before we met, like we didn't know each other from a can of paint, but oh my she God. said that and I was like, "That's my sister goes, oh my, I was like, right? <laughs> Random, but yeah, so my sister said, and just like you, we've manifested these wonderful things in our lives. Um, That's right. Yeah. So right. how many seasons was it you on? It was seven seasons and it was just under 1,500 shows. Wow. wow. And when I tell you, I probably missed maybe, maybe 10 shows. Okay. Okay. That was it. I mean, I, it was a lot of work. I right. mean, it was a lot of work. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you know, black woman, we going to bring it. Okay. We're going to show up and show up. I'm still hustling. I, you know, people like the chew ended. I'm like, they're like, what are we gonna do? I'm like, you gonna find a job? You gonna hustle? You gonna create? You gonna create a job? And that's what I've been doing. I've been creating because when I started the chew, I didn't make that much money. So I wasn't, I wasn't Clinton. I wasn't Mario. I wasn't Michael. Daphne and I both were, you know, and she's an us. So and I wasn't an us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had, I had to really look for other work. So not only was I doing the chew and living in New York, I had to make up income so that I could live there. It was, it was, it was tough. It was really tough. Wasn't it, Matthew? <laughs> he gave a side eye. I like that. <laughs> that is crazy. So, of course, we have to talk about what's going on in the world. First of all, with the pandemic, how did you handle the sheltering in place? Because you, you were in New York or D.C.? Um, I was in D.C. I was actually okay. ready to tape a show for Food Network, Best Baker in America. We taped, we filmed for 30 minutes. They were like, we're shutting it down. So I went back to D.C. It was early March. And honestly, really, I'm going to tell you all. I'm just talking about my experience and I know there's been a lot of trauma and pain, but I felt like I was dating my husband again, my house, my neighborhood. I was getting to know my space and really enjoying it. Hence is why you see this in the background that we, I am moving. I am moving from New York. I am, I mean, because I just don't need to be there anymore and I can't and afford when you need to, to Right. When you need to be there, you can get on the, um, what's it called? The eight. A a Acela and take the train on in and do what you got to do and go back home. That's right. That's yeah. right. You know, it's a three hour train ride away. So in that respect, it has been really great. Matthew has really enjoyed having me at home. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> that is awesome. That's awesome. But you know what? That And that's what I told people. I said, please come out of this better than you came in it. I don't care what it is. It could be something small. It could be something huge, but come out of it with something better than you can, you know, come out as a better person than you were when you went in. And I think that those people who, you know, this whole time is the power, there's power in the pivot. And if you sit at home and you complain about being there and I, and, and I heard these complaints and then, Two months later, when it's time for these same people to go back to work, they're like, oh, I'm not ready. Because it took them six weeks to get used to being at home. And then they spent two weeks of bliss. And now they're not ready to go back to work. But if you live in the moment and you accept whatever it is, you have you actually have more time. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm telling myself that for other things. But but you you will you find that you will have more time. 
Definitely. Definitely. And I've seen, I told Alicia, I said, I saw her on Tamron Hall. I said, and that day I had actually, that day or the day before I said, oh, it'd be great if she came on the show and cooked with Alicia. Now, uh -huh. then you did it on Tamron. I go, Alicia, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> but, um, yeah. 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 But yeah, I saw you cooking on Tamron and I said, Liz, she's talking about, she's got, and then, I mean, even working with your assistant, you have all these projects as we started working on this, like in May. So, you know, but this is when, you know, you're available. So you've been, you've been busy. You've been keeping busy. I'm, I'm telling you, we're out pitching shows, pitching to brands because they're, they're, television isn't happening. Production hasn't opened up yet. So we turned our basement apartment, Matthew does his um, yoga studio. I have my kitchen where I film in. And that space is really busy, but we have a little bit of a separation from upstairs and living. And it's not a big house, but we, I am pumping. I mean, like all of these uh, brands that go into them, it's like, do you want any uh, <laughs> cooking demos? Can I do that? Just creating a job for myself because without working, I don't get paid just like right. everybody else. Exactly. Now, we, of course, have to talk about um, the unfortunate happenings of George Floyd, which woke up what we already knew because we've been walking around in this skin our whole lives, woke yes. everyone up, which is another reason why a lot of brands are very interested in people like us, but, um, but woke everyone up and has put on, you know, put mirrors in front of people, I honestly feel like. So I remember a long time, I can't remember what conversation we had, but Carla had mentioned to me how even at ABC, she was having trouble with her hair and all this stuff they were saying was a problem, but it's not a problem. It's the hair that comes out of her scalp. Right. And so the first, per for season one, the first person who did my hair, my hair went through trauma. It was I remember you talking about that. Real. I mean, my hair was so stressed out. Seriously, it changed textures. I mean, my hair was just, it was a hot mess. And, and I'm going to own that because I didn't know how to speak up, right? Here I am in this new job. I thought I had to just be, um, so there's somebody who's constantly, who, who is not black going over my hair with a curling iron at four and five times. And I'm like, my hair holds heat. So I'm like, that's probably going to sizzle, sizzle like somebody on Donald Duck. Cause that thing like, yeah. Um, and that's what happened. And in the end, without asking me, they rehired her. And I'm like, I've been complaining about my hair for an entire season. You cannot hire her. So they didn't. They rescinded it because it was within three days. And then she sued. She attempted to sue ABC and me and her boss at, at the Chew. And, right. and I was like, for discrimination, too. <laughs> You got to be joking. You don't know how to do my hair and you're going to, you're going to sue me because you're, I'm discriminated against you because you're white. I'm just, no, you don't know how to do my hair. The next two people who came to do my hair were white. She just didn't know how to do my hair. So, um, so there was that. And then the other turning point was when my hair went gray because, you know, it's under this hat, but it's so yes. like my hair is so white. I should probably put my hat back on, but that's okay. Um, so there was that. And um, and they were like, you're, you're not going to let your hair go gray. And and I was like, what? I'm forest, by the way. You may as well tell, tell me, let your hair go gray, right? right? Because, and I didn't touch another bottle of color since then because I had friends who were dying their hair to look younger because our hair belies our, I mean, our skin belies our age because as a person of color, you don't look as old as, as somebody thinks that you are. So you color your hair to keep a job or to get a job. So I said, I really want to use my platform to show women that it is your decision whether or not to color your hair. And why is it that men look distinguished and women look old? And if there are enough of us who do our silver hair, there's not going to be that backlash when you're on television and people expect you to have brown hair. I mean, Barbara Walters, you never saw her gray hair. She's 80 some years is old. True. This is true. It was blonde till the day she left the view. It was blonde. 
Yeah. Wow. So you guys, like I said, and I think everyone knows racial injustice has been around, been around for a long time. It's just now, I think because everyone was sitting at home and there was a video, everyone had to pause. And I, of course, have not watched the video, but everyone had to pause and you could not deny the images that you saw. You couldn't, you could not deny it. Not to mention, they also mentioned this is the first time that we saw the cop and the victim in the same screen yeah like all the other videos it was like a body cam or something so you never saw the cop you just heard the bullets or something so this was the first time for that so um and you and look you're in dc so you got do you live near black lives matter plaza no we don't we don't but uh we're about 20 minutes away but it's okay. it, it, it's so such an empowering thing and then when mayor bowser when we woke up and we saw that was happening we were like She's no joke. Yes. She's no joke. Just like, cause we have a, you know, we have a black female mayor here too, Mayor Lightfoot. She's not playing either. She's like, no. oh no, wait I a minute. Her videos, by the way, love yeah. her videos. Yeah. <laughs> she just, she just makes fun of herself, and she's like, well, if someone's gonna make fun of me, I'll do it myself. Yeah. And so yeah. she's yeah. so funny, but um, but yeah, so it's just unfortunate. And then um. In case you haven't read in the news, and I'll post it somewhere, you guys, you can look everywhere. There is a woman that was at ABC that is now on a vacation, if you ask me, because she's still getting paid. I think she ain't been fired. Um, she uh, said some very interesting things about Sonny Hostin of The View. She said some interesting things when Robin Roberts was trying to do some contract negotiations. And I mean, just basically stunk up the joint. And I don't know how she kept a job, but now... It has all come out. And this was we I thought this just happened because I know contract negotiations around this time because Robin Roberts, I guess what the woman said, I will tell you, she said, what is she? What does she want? She said, We're not asking. We didn't ask you to pick cotton. Yeah, she wanted to. So we haven't asked you to pick cotton. The, the executive's name was Barbara Fadita. And um, I, I, I do know Barbara. None of that happened to me. But um, I do know a number of people. So the black people in the news and on television, ABC, um, we would get together for these um, black events. And, um, you know, I heard, I heard, you know, stories. There, there's some people who were traumatized. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I don't, I, I would be too. I mean, and so the craziest thing is that this lady is Jewish. Not that that makes her, obviously, you know, she can't be racist, but she is Jewish. And I was like, wow, like you should understand because people don't necessarily treat your people very fairly either sometimes, but that's neither here or there. But like I said, she's on some sort of vacation. But when you look, when you read that article and it talks about how she would do the, the dirty work and the guys would pass on the dirty work for her to do. I mean, my, my thing is it can't just be one person. Right, right, right. Not one person does not create a culture. There right. has to be other people. And so the news, the news division is very different from uh, entertainment. So the two was under entertainment, not news. So we were under an entirely different division. But also I think that, and a lot of white people have asked me and asked my friends, what can we do? When people say or do something, you have to speak up. You can't sit there and just, well, they didn't say anything to me. Right. So therefore I'm not gonna, no. Exactly. Oh, and my sister reminds me, we have to say allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, 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 absolutely, yes. allegedly, because yes. nothing's been proven. Right. But um, when people do need to speak up and when, when they get, afraid that their jobs are going to be in jeopardy eventually they will be because you didn't speak up because it's it's just, it's condoning compliance and, and i understand the fear but you know yeah you tough. gotta you gotta do something you can't just let and honestly the way that my faith is built if you do the right thing everything will be fine it, it will all be fine you know if you lose the job you'll get a better one because well, you did the right thing well, that's it. Because if you lose that job, you weren't supposed to be there. You were supposed to get the. You were supposed to learn there. It was a stepping stone to the next thing, right? Right. Yeah. So I, I don't believe that you have to stay there because you know I'm the only woman, and so I, you know, no, you have to. And then these people, unfortunately, 
black people are not enough, not enough black people are in these rooms. So therefore that's how stuff like this ends up happening. But if you can get in the room, you need to make sure you bring others to the room. And so just even with the chew, they clearly needed some black producers so they could say, um, so that's not going to work out. Because, I mean, and mind you, I've heard in cosmetology school, you learn how to do all hair, not just one type, all hair. But clearly this woman didn't know how to do yours. But um, but well, you, you know, should definitely. The other, thing, the other thing to our hair is you have hair homework. When you're black, you have hair homework. I can't show up with wet hair the morning of. So I have to do something to my hair. When I get home, if I know I want my hair to be a certain way or I need them to We get a bad patch. Uh oh, did we lose her? No, we didn't lose her. Okay, now we can see you. You were frozen and then you're, uh, uh, uh oh, she's gone. She'll be right back. Just a, give, here she is. Okay, you were frozen and then we couldn't hear you. So go ahead. All right, hair homework. Okay. Hair homework. I could not show up without my hair. Something been done. But recently, so you, you got all that when I was like, oh, you know, I get to have this hair homework and I couldn't show up wet with my hair. But recently I was doing a job with the Food Network, and a lot of times, because the budgets are tight, their hair and makeup would be the same person. But a lot of times, people are either going to be stronger with hair or stronger with makeup. And for me, I always prefer, I prefer them to be stronger with hair, because my hair is more, it's more work for me to do. Right. And so, it was for the first time I pushed back on that, you know, that I really need somebody to do my hair. Because... And it's not that I'm being a diva, but when you're on camera, you need to feel as best as you can so that you can deliver as talent to do right. the show without thinking about your appearance. You want to feel good. It's important that you feel good. And feeling good is not going out, girl. There were a couple times at the chew that girl, my head oh, You have to look at the cook. Just look at the cookbook on the first season. Uh, oh my god okay whatever but uh, <laughs> um but it's really about feeling really confident and so much of your appearance is tied into that when you're going to be on television no i totally agree you got i mean if you're not comfortable it, it just comes out in everything my my friend uh christia she's the founder of tgin hair products and she wrote her book and she talks about how she was an attorney and because it wasn't okay for her to wear natural hair, she wore wigs. But that also altered her performance at work and she lost her job because she wasn't comfortable. She couldn't be herself. So right. very, very important that you, you know, get to wear your hair the way you want to wear your hair. Um, Eva's daughter is a beauty queen to be. For Miss Chicago, um, outstanding team. We went with the makeup artist they chose for Eden, but I did her hair myself. They fully understood when I explained why. Can't take chances. <laughs> she didn't want her to come out there looking crazy. That's exactly right. And How so many you, times have you gone to a hair salon and they're like, oh, we'll do your hair, we'll do your hair. You step in the door and they're like, who's doing our hair? Y'all, who, who's doing our hair? <laughs> and then they take my hair out of the, uh, out of the holder and it's like, Right. Like, oh, shoot. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's it. But um, so you have three cookbooks, right? I have three cookbooks. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys go to my blog, I have links to the cookbooks and I will make sure that they're in the box below this video as well. But um, please go buy our cookbooks. The last one is called the Soul Food Cookbook. And she's not trying to kill us. So it's good soul food, you guys, that we can eat and we can be okay with eating. Um, so definitely check it out. 
Um, and so what's what's on the horizon? Do you set intentions? I need to ask you that because, of course, my executive producer just texted me. But <laughs> no, I do. I do set intentions. And people always, I'm glad that you asked about intentions versus goals because I don't set goals. Me neither. I set I my set intentions intent every morning. And my intentions are always to be happy in whatever I'm doing, to feel comfortable in my skin with whatever I'm doing. And um, so... I am doing, and so, and the reason I said it so broadly is because I would have never guessed that I would be in this position on television and doing all of these things. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have dreamt that. I wouldn't have made that a goal. So by, by saying that I want to be comfortable in my skin, if I am meant to perform and be in front of a, an audience, then that's where the universe puts me. And so I have a show coming out on Netflix called Crazy Delicious. It's coming out June 24th. And I'm going to be taping Best Baker in America on, um, that's for this fall. And I'm going to be the host, which will be the first time that I'm hosting uh, a competition show on the Food Network. Okay. Because uh, a lot of times I'm a judge. Yep, I've seen. And um, what else is going on? Oh, I'm working on, you know what I'm working on? I'm going to throw it out there just because I'm super excited. I'm working on a series of prints and patterns for um, aprons and headscarves and things like that. Because I love mixed prints and people always comment about my, my clothes. And I'm not, it's not a line of clothes, but it's a line of kitchen things. So I'm super excited about that. Awesome. Awesome. So you guys, June 24th is next week, Wednesday. So let us all make sure we tune into Netflix and blow it up so it can be the number one spot. Crazy delicious. We're going to check it out. Um, Cause of course we have to, who wouldn't support Carla? Come on, you guys, come on. We got to support Carla. And of course, go get these cookbooks. Like I said, you will not regret it. Her food is fabulous. I mean, fabulous. Um, but I thank you so much for doing this. This was amazing. Everyone has really enjoyed it. There's been this is probably the most comments I've had since I made my big comeback in 2020. Because I, like I said, I used to be regular, and then we fell off. And in the in the pandemic, I'm like, well, I should do shows. And so this yeah. is what I, know. I mean, but again, the power of the pivot. So here you are, and it, I was so I'm so glad that we got to make this work, and it's been great to see you. You too. You too. Even before I knew I was doing your cute little dimples. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. Um, Chef Alicia Nicole, can you sign in? Please? We're about to come off. Please. Let's see if she, she's in her office. She's fancy. She has her own office. But um, oh, and Eva said she's gonna be tuning into Netflix. Awesome okay. thoughts. Yes. yes. Power of the pivot. Love it. Eva Wilson said that. Yes. Um, so, yeah, the power of the pivot is no joke. You know what I was going to ask you? Do you work with a glasses brand? Because you change glasses, like, and they're always fabulous. I just want to say not yet because that is on my list. I really want to do that. Smart. Smart. I really want to do that. Smart. Because I was like, you definitely need to do that because your glasses game is tight. I mean, Look, us people that can't see, <laughs> we pay attention to these things. <laughs> yes, it's. I call it my face art. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Hold Is on. Chef Alicia coming on? Coming. She's. I don't know how. I told you to click the link. Here, I just texted to her. Okay, she should be here in a minute. But um, but yeah, the glasses um. Face art, I like that. And then you might do hats too, because you you do wear a lot of hats too. Yes, I like hats. Yeah, yeah. You might do hats and glasses. Look, that's the publicist mind of me. Oh, here she is. Um, that's the publicist of me. Here she is. Hi. Let me cover that. <laughs> I'm very well. How are you? Oh, I'm so great. You know, we're just here hanging out, chatting and right? stuff. <laughs> On the road. Yes, I'm literally on the road. <laughs> He's oh, like, Alicia froze. She froze. Oh, signal's bad in her office, I guess. Um, 
but at least she got to come on and say hello. But we will definitely look. I'm t I'm, I'm inviting myself. We're gonna have to come and break bread with you in DC. Um, I hope Matthew doesn't I mind that. the two extra people. <laughs> but um, definitely, we will have to do that. Oh, yeah, I know. I was going to tell them. So I watched you on Girlfriends Check In. And I must try this Black Eyed Peas hummus. Because I'm not a hummus person, but I like Black Eyed Peas a lot. Okay. It is so good, no matter what Kim Phil says. <laughs> <laughs> no, she did. She said it was okay. I thought she was okay by the end. She's like, okay. Yeah. You know what? That was so much fun. I loved doing that. It was so much fun. And they're so, so it was on OWN, you guys. OWN is doing this every Saturday night, basically pandemic people, um, four girlfriends. And Carla hosted. Kim Fields was on with her. And I just love Kim Fields Kim and always have. Kim Tony Rose was on and yes. my friend Lisa Silvera. It was super fun. We cooked, we chatted, we laughed, we joked. It was awesome. Yeah, so definitely check that out. You can probably find it. I think most of them are on YouTube now, so you can be able to find it on YouTube or on the own app. But yes, I saw that, and you said Matthew does the cooking. Yep, yep, he does the cooking. I, I tell people I cook at the office. <laughs> That's one way to put it. That's one way to put it. But yeah, yeah. I, Anika Noni Rose has asthma like me. Um, she said something on Twitter one day, and that's how I figured that out. I was like, wow. And then um, I, as a matter of fact, I watched Kim Field celebrate her birthday, and I'm trying to get her on the show. We'll see what happens. But um, we have the same birthday. Yes, I remember that. I remember that because you came in on her shout outs. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, you guys, this has been awesome. Carla, get safely back home. And thank you so much, Matthew, for letting us take up an hour of your time. <laughs> Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.